Hey everybody, KMO here, and this is another antinatalism video. I'm going to read some, some feedback that I got, but first thing, I'm just going to report some feedback I got. I don't remember who said it or the entire context of their message, but somebody accused me of being pedantic. And uh, what I take them to mean by that is that I make the same very simple points again and again, and I talk down to the, the audience as if they were stupid. I don't think that many people interested in this topic are stupid in the absolute sense of, you know, just not having the, uh, the cognitive capacity to learn or follow arguments. I think people who are gravitating to this sort of content tend to be emotionally damaged, angry people who like to lash out and who are just not ill-equipped, but ill-disposed to follow rational arguments. So for those of you for whom, you know, very basic logical argumentation is a given and you don't have to have it spelled out for you, I can imagine some of these, these videos are excruciating. And uh, yeah, pedantic. But you know, if I'm going to do something like this, where I'm going to pick a topic and I'm going to talk on it regularly and respond to criticisms, well, I, I just know it comes with the territory I'm going to have to repeat myself. So, I'm going to read some feedback here from Andreas Moss. Andreas writes, and I'm sorry, I'm just going to read what you actually wrote, not what I think you intended to write. I don't deny People tend to levitate towards ideologies or philosophies that suits them. This is a possible way of chipping off some validity and credibility from antinatalists. And I prefer arguments like this to, then, why don't you kill yourself then? Well, one could argue it's close to an ad hominem since it's based more on the person it's coming from than the actual argument, but it could still bear some truth that persona and your circumstances inflicts on how you view things to some extent. But I still don't see how it disproves antinatalism in the logical sense. I've been stuck thinking about antinatalism close to a decade now, and even if antinatalism attracts some miserable people, the logic of the arguments still seems correct to me, and not really flawed in the slightest. And I kind of hoped someone would by this point. So I personally don't think this is the correct way of disproving antinatalism. I don't think it's this easy. Okay, I've said this in other videos on this topic, but, you know, I can't expect anybody responding to one video on this topic to have seen all of my videos on this topic, so let me repeat myself. If I'm critical of the behavior of people who claim to be antinatalists, you cannot infer from that that I'm making a general attack on the philosophy of antinatalism. In fact, just the opposite. Just today, I started thinking about my own antinatalism timeline. Now, I'm 50. I remember when I was in my late teens and early 20s, I actively wanted to have children. And then in my mid to late 20s, I started to think, no, I think my energies would be better suited if I were to devote my resources and my time and my passion to the ideas that I think are worth spreading and do that. And then in my early 30s, uh, basically ended up, <sighs> we didn't agree to it, but somebody, you know, that I was dating, we basically had sex every day for a month without any sort of birth control, without talking about it. But, uh, you know, what's going to happen <laughs> if you do that? So she got pregnant and uh, we decided to abort the pregnancy and we actually had an appointment and it was time we were sitting on the couch. It was time to get up off the couch and go and get in the car and drive to the clinic and have that abortion done. And I said, I, I can't go through with it. You know, this this child, and I'm not making a point, a political point about abortion, but in my case, this child that already existed was something that I was not willing to. The, uh, the phone cut out, uh, out of memory, which spared you my long rant. So uh, picking up where it left off, uh, for a time in my youth, I wanted kids, and then for a time I thought that my resources would be better spent advancing good ideas, uh, and then I ended up having kids anyway. But uh, after my divorce, and after my kids had grown up a bit, and I was getting into a, a new relationship, I got a vasectomy, so I won't be having any more kids. And uh, it was after the vasectomy that I discovered the book The Conspiracy Against the Human Race, A Contrivance of Horror, 
by Thomas Ligotti. I looked at my Amazon records just this morning. I bought that book on Kindle soon after it was published in April of 2014. That summer, watching the first season of True Detective, there is that great scene in the car where Matthew McConaughey's character, Russ Cole, starts to describe to his partner his, his outlook on life. And there comes a point where, you know, in just in watching it the first time, I realized, wait a second, he's basically quoting Thomas Ligotti. And I hadn't finished reading the book, and I, I was so excited by the series and the connection between the series and the book that I went back to the book, and instead of picking up where I left off, I started over. I read the whole thing, virtual cover to virtual cover, and uh, then I started talking to people about it. And I was pretty excited about antinatalism. I was pretty excited about the ideas. I liked uh, Ligotti's style. I liked his writing. I liked how he kept returning to the slogan, non-existence never hurt anyone. You know, because it's so obviously true. So I, I thought that antinatalism was a fairly compelling philosophy. It had challenged me. It challenged my life choices. I had no, I mean, I wasn't thoroughly convinced, but I was certainly well disposed to it. Fast forward a year. I've been talking about it on my podcast, the CROM podcast, enough that somebody has written and said, hey, uh, I'm a big fan of Thomas Ligotti as well. I've read this book. I'd like to talk to you about it. So we get together and we record a conversation, which uh, along with some other you know, uh, bits and pieces that I put together, comprised two podcast episodes. One was CROM podcast episode number 474, Malignantly Useless, which unfortunately is not available right now. I have put out a call for anybody with the MP3, and if anybody sends it to me, I will repost it and post a link to it here in this video. Uh, so you can go and listen to it, and you will hear. I am not only um, not hostile to the idea of antinatalism, I'm actually, you know, at least for a time in certain parts of the conversation, I'm, I'm an advocate for it. And in fact, after that podcast, I got a contact email from Thomas Ligotti himself, who basically said he thought that I had given his ideas fair representation in the podcast. So that was the summer of 2015. Flash forward a little bit more than a year. It's now October 2016, and I used a local community access TV station studio to put together two what I thought to be, you know, pretty heroic videos. Heroic in that it's not just me talking into a cell phone, just, you know, off the cuff. I scripted that video out. I went down to the TV station. I shot it, you know, reading me in front of a, a green screen, reading it off a teleprompter. Then I spent a lot of time in editing, you know, collecting images, making titles, and I created these two videos. They're called Humans Suck, uh, the full title is, I guess, uh, Misanthropy and Antinatalism, and Life Sucks, Pessimism and Antinatalism. And these two videos have basically broken out and found an audience outside of my usual audience. And if you go and you look at those two videos, you will see I'm not attacking antinatalists in those videos. I'm not attacking antinatalism. I clearly, in the video, you can see I have an enthusiasm for the subject matter enough of an enthusiasm that I sunk a good many hours and a lot of effort into creating these two videos in which I'm not attacking the idea, I'm just presenting it. And I present different aspects and different arguments that all sort of uh, cluster together under the umbrella of antinatalism, and not all of them are consistent with one another. So it does seem like sometimes I'm advocating one thing and sometimes I'm advocating another, but I'm not advocating anything. I'm presenting these various points of view. And invariably, people watch those videos, and there comes a point where I'm presenting an idea that they disagree with, and they think that I am the embodiment of the thing that they disagree with, and they are pissed, and they send me the lamest, stupidest, laziest, most thoughtless communication that makes its way into my email inbox. I mean, they post it as a comment on YouTube, but every now and again, YouTube decides that I need a, an email notification for these new comments. So those two videos have been sitting on YouTube, drawing attention and drawing really poorly thought out comments. And those comments have been building and accumulating. And over the past couple of years, 
antinatalism, antinatalism has gone from being a philosophy that I find compelling enough to talk about and make media about to basically a label for a group of people that I find to be insufferable. And when I point out their insufferable behavior and the stupid arguments they make and the complete breakdown and rationality that, that manifests itself every time they try to put words together, I'm not going back and criticizing you know, antinatalism as, had, as, as it has been articulated by thoughtful writers like Thomas Ligotti. It's basically like, I enjoy Rick and Morty. I'm really excited about the new big order for multiple seasons. I can't wait for season four. I love Rick and Morty. I also understand that a lot of Rick and Morty fans are idiots. And it irritates me when somebody makes a comment, just a broad brush comment about, you know, how awful Rick and Morty fans are. Because I didn't go and harass McDonald's employees looking for that Szechuan sauce, you know. I, I had no participation in that. Nobody I know, no Rick and Morty fan that I know, had anything to do with that admittedly very sad and sorry behavior enacted on, you know, by Ricky, Rick and Morty fans. So I understand the difference. You know, you can criticize the behavior of a subset of people who have an enthusiasm for a thing from the thing itself. They're, they are completely different categories. And if I go to make a logical argument against antinatalism, You'll know it. There'll be no ad hominem. You know, there'll be no reference to stupid, stupid things that antinatalists say online. You know, I will actually be quoting the relevant philosophers and possibly diagramming their arguments and responding, you know, in the manner that those arguments deserve. Okay. That is all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I will talk to you again tomorrow.